Advertisements guarantee to satisfy all our needs. Advertisements promises the moon. We all know that this is far from reality. We may have tried all kinds of soft drinks advertised and have yet to find the one that satisfies. Material things perhaps meet a momentary need, but the deeper thirst is not quenched. Only God can give us that which satisfies our hearts. A poor college student lived in a hostel and worked in the college cafeteria to earn some money to support his studies. Each morning, much before sunrise, as he walked from the hostel to the cafeteria, he passed by the home of one of his professors. Through a window, he could see the light on and the professor at his desk, morning after morning. At night, the student stayed back at the library until closing. And on his return trip again, he would see the professor's desk light on. One day after class, the student picked up courage and asked the professor, Sir, every day I walk by your house and you are so intent at work. What keeps you studying? You never seem to stop. The professor answered, Well, you see, I would rather have my students drink from a running stream than from a stagnant pool. John's Gospel 4, 5 to 15, 19 to 26 and 39 to 42 is about living waters. We read of the encounter between Jesus and a Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. A beautiful, soul-touching conversation takes place between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. As they enter into conversation, her curiosity is aroused when he offers her the possibility of living waters. You have no bucket, sir, and the well is deep. How can you get this living water? Jesus does not answer her objection, but leads her to be more disposed to the gift he wants to give her. Living water has a profound double meaning, for it can mean fresh flowing water, not well water, but also that water which is life-giving. This profound statement of Jesus is again misunderstood by the woman. Give me that water so that I may not need to come to this well again. In order that she might receive the gifts Jesus wishes to give her, he gently confronts her personal life. He treats her with great respect, with no hint of judgment or condemnation. Jesus is able to see within her secret being where she thirsts for love, which her broken relationships and affairs with men have not satisfied. She is a deeply wounded woman, and yet when Jesus confronts her, he does so with care and love, so that she does not feel convicted, but accepted. She is open to Jesus. Sir, I can see you are a prophet. When the conversation gets too personal, the woman diverts to a safer issue of debating the true place of worship. Jesus, while answering her query, leads her back to that gift he desires to give her, that she is now ready for, the gift of himself. I am the Messiah. I who am speaking to you, I am he. After the interlude, the woman has forgotten her need for water from the well. After the interlude, the woman has forgotten her need for water from the well. Instead, she goes to tell her villagers the good news of meeting Jesus. Jesus had planted the seed of faith in her. She leaves her jar behind, symbolizing the giving up of everything that was weighing her down. From being a seeker, she has now become a missionary. From seeking momentary pleasure outside her, she has found the well within. Jesus was glad to see her, not because he wanted anything from her, but because he wanted something for her. She didn't understand everything 
he told her but she understood that he knew her jesus knew her through and through and he still cared for her he was interested in her to him she was important not because she could give him something but because in his eyes she mattered she knew that what he had said about being the messiah was true this was the only explanation for the change that had already happened in her life and in her heart it was as if a door had opened in her life where before she had been weighed down by a thick dark high wall protecting her broken heart jesus freed her she had to tell others in the town she knew he was the savior and she just had to tell everyone she knew that as soon as they had met him they too would realize it and they did before that encounter at the well she was just surviving after that encounter with his words his glance his presence she found herself from then on she began to live sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of nowhere sometimes in the middle of nowhere we find ourselves jesus helped the samaritan woman at the well to find herself in the middle of nowhere the samaritan woman at the well is a picture of all of us going round and round to reach the mirage of happiness jesus is approach to this outcast woman is a gentle one he begins from a position of weakness a request for a drink of water god appears to be more in need of us than we of god jesus did not condemn the samaritan woman for her lifestyle he made her to believe in her own inner self and her inner worth sometimes the greatest good we can do for other people is not to give them our wealth but to show them their own wealth heartfelt gifts deserve the return gift of gratitude the samaritan woman returned from the well with her thirst quenched and a heart filled with gratitude we know that without sufficient fluids the vital organs of the body would fail and we would perish because of dehydration there are many persons who suffer from severe spiritual dehydration they try to quench their spiritual thirst with material things spiritually dehydrated people thirst excessively for money wealth relationships flamboyant lifestyles power and positions in life these longings are transitory and passing riches need not necessarily make a person happy poverty need not necessarily destroy one's happiness ultimately a time comes for all of us when we begin to long for the things that are higher nobler and spiritually heartwarming that is what the psalmist meant when he confessed like a deer that yearns for running streams so my soul longs for you my god one of the first things the national defense relief forces do in the midst of people whose lives have been devastated by floods cyclones and natural disasters is to supply clean drinking water in the midst of much pain and loss clean water is absolutely necessary to sustain life and health do we go to jesus who alone can satisfy our thirst as a fountain of water springing up to eternal life or are we tempted to go back to the past to stagnant pools that momentarily satisfy us it is time once again to revisit our priorities and our thirst for god we pray that we may put ourselves and our lives in the hands of god and that god may make us happy content and satisfied even while we run our race in this world may mary most holy says pope francis help us to cultivate the desire for christ the source of living water the only one who can satisfy the thirst for life and love that we carry in our hearts amen